Hi, and welcome to the Market Alert for Friday, the 28th of October, 2022. So nukes and pukes, big tech and bond yields plunge on Putin. Pentagon and earnings panic, the biggest two-day outperformance of equal-weighted NASDAQ over the cap-weighted NASDAQ since November 2022. So that's why we saw the markets move lower at the close. So yields lower after dovish ECB while big tech takes a hit post-meta. And here's a very interesting article, uh, the preparations to buy all things are taking place. And it talks about uh, the Fed is forced to raise uh, the interest rates by 50 basis points next week because Canada did uh, this last week. And if it's only 50 basis points, then as it says here, we're in uh, Pivotville population. Powell, as far as the markets will be concerned. So, yeah, the markets are looking for Powell to actually not go the full 75 basis points next week. And if he doesn't, then uh, we're going to see uh, the markets uh, really start to move to the upside. And finally, ECB um, hikes 75 basis points uh, during yesterday's trading session and will raise further deciding meeting by meeting. Amazing, isn't it? Inflation is running at 10% and we're at 2%. Incredible. Let's just um, have a look at those GDP numbers as well from uh, yesterday. Um, they came out at uh, 2.6 and that's uh, what sent the markets moving to the upsides. As I said, if it came out at 2.3 or higher, the markets would move up and they did. However, later on with all of the earnings, the markets uh, were slammed to the downside uh, back to where they started. So a bit of weakness coming into the market. So let's have a look at this now and start off by looking at uh, the Dow. So here we can see uh, yesterday we traded up to the 89% retracement. As uh, we said in the market alert yesterday, not a red bar in sight. The markets uh, moved so far from this low of uh, the 13th of October all the way up to uh, yesterday, a grand total of three and a half thousand points. So 10% in a matter of days for the Dow. So a bit of a breather is uh, certainly required in this market. In the 30 minute chart for actually before I move on, let's just uh, draw in a few uh, lines. We've got a, a pivot here and there where the market or a swing high low where the markets stopped. So let's just draw in some downside targets just in case the market is allowed to move lower. The first uh, um, support is going to be the five bar moving average, followed by these areas of uh, support here. Uh, the 78 I'm going to remove so you can see there we've got to 78 overbought and now the market is uh, looking a bit weakish overnight. That could soon turn around though, especially when we get to yesterday's low. Uh, that's all we need there and we'll get a, we're going to have a soon have a move back to the upside. But yesterday on the, uh, the news, uh, we saw the markets uh, moving to the upside on those GDP figures and it continued up not any great rates of knots and then later on we saw some weakness coming in with the earnings or the expectations of those earnings not meeting the forecast and uh, prices then moving down so at the moment in the 30 minutes I'd be looking for this market to find some support and you can see 89 and the low there is uh, where it's going to find it 62 at the moment as well the golden ratio is also a very important area don't discount the upside by any means and think there's going to be a major sell-off at the moment. We've certainly got uh, numerous days there where the market's closed above the five bar moving average and we're in need of a correction, but uh, how big is the correction going to be and how far are they going to let it move lower? In the German DAX at the 78% retracement, bit of weakness overnight, still above the five bar moving average. Again, we've got a situation where the markets have moved uh, strongly to the upside for the last few days from the 13th of October at 1200 points for the DAX. Again, it's just under 10% of a move since the 13th of October. So the market in need of a bit of a correction. That being the case, again, from the swing high to low, uh, these are the downside targets. Five bar moving average first, followed by the selection of fibs there. Also note that the 62% golden ratio ties in with the 50 bar moving average at the moment. In the five minute chart uh, for yesterday, uh, you can see overnight there where the markets uh, move sharply lower as the Dow closed. 
But uh, during yesterday, again, you can see uh, in the futures market, whoops, let's go back a bit, I'm not quite there. In the futures market, uh, we moved lower and then we became sideways and eventually the market broke down. There was absolutely nothing for the first hour and the market uh, moving lower, waiting for the ECB, obviously, with it being the German DAX. Uh, this is uh, the 1320, the news came out uh, for the interest rates at 115. The raise rates, as uh, can be seen here, uh, there we go, we've got rates are going up to 2%, which they did from 1.25, that's 75 basis increase. Market up off this news and then continued. Well, what a surprise, eh? And uh, overnight, the market dropping there, well, yesterday evening before the market closed. Sorry, just after, yeah, just as it closed on the Dow. And then overnight, uh, we've seen the market uh, move down a bit as well. Uh, where is the low in the Dow? It's own, Sorry, in the DAX. It's just down here. We're only 100 points away if the market wanted to have a shakeout, but a massive amount of support at uh, the low. That will take some getting through, given the bullishness of the market at the moment. So uh, the low of uh, yesterday in the Dow, sorry, the DAX, I'll get it right in a minute, in the DAX, is uh, 13,000. Well, there you go. That uh, psychological number again, very, very important number. So this is, uh, again, we've got here, we've got the S1, the low, and the major, major psychological level of 13,000. It will take a lot to drive through that 13,000 if the market does move lower. Meanwhile, trades managed to get a couple in yesterday up to uh, 220, uh, profit factor of 6.02 and uh, 78 22 for the win loss ratio like i say i've not been at the desk much this week it's half term and uh, other things to do as well while the weather is still mild outside uh, before settling down for a winter of just uh, trading uh, uh, solidly for the next uh, four or five months when uh, we should start to see a lot of action kicking off in the s p also trading up to the 89 percent we've got supply we're overbought uh, we're below the five bar moving average on the s p which is interesting the only market at the moment that we've looked at showing this um just going to redraw these fibs because they're in the wrong place so from here up to wednesday's session you can see we're already through 38 we've got 50 62 is uh tying in with the 20 bar moving average as well so any down move there watch this interestingly in the s p we've also got a bit of resistance now with the five bar moving average above prices and the 50 ema as well in the 30 minute charts uh the, the reaction to uh, yesterday's News uh, was a bit of a damp squib on the GDP news and then eventually the market uh, succumbing to those earning uh, issues overnight with uh, Credit Suisse reporting a 14% drop in profits. Sorry, no, not 14% drop in profits, billions, four and a half billion and uh, the share price dropping 14% immediately. DP showing some resistance in this time frame and again, price is currently below the uh, close, the 5MA and the 20 bar moving average. FTSE is uh, also at the 50 EMA. Uh, at the moment, it's just sitting on the five bar moving average. And uh, let's have a look here for the downside. There you can see there's a, a selection of fibs that you could have from here, which takes you back to the 21st of October up to the high of yesterday. We'll give you those areas of support. In the currencies, well, since uh, Rishi got in, the markets have been sideways for the GBP, JPY, which you can see they're a bit choppy and all over the place. And it's still 100 point uh, move off the 200 MA there and uh, also on the way back, but volatile in between. And then overnight, we've had the market move higher and then back down, uh, close there and the low. The low is going to be important. That's going to be dependent on whether the dollar actually rallies back or not. In the pound, also uh, sideways for yesterday, showing a bit of weakness there, a bit of supply coming in, and we're overbought at the moment as well. So again, potential for a bit of a down move here. So let's just draw in some fibs to the downside. Again, you'll see the 38 tying in with the 50 EMA, but we still got the five bar moving average as support. It should mark the market move lower initially. Uh, yesterday, you can see that we were about 70 points uh, on the upside, but that was on the GDP news. And then uh, also uh, down on the uh, 
first part of the trading session. The pound coming to yesterday's low at the moment is going to be very important to hold at this level. Failure to do that will see uh, the market uh, then start to head towards uh, that uh, five bar moving average there. And finally, let's kick off with the dollar. Uh, finding demand for yesterday over sold so we could see a bit of a move to the upside with the dollar particularly that we've got uh, Powell uh, making his announcement next week on interest rates according to the news uh, we'll look at that in more detail on Monday we've got uh, the market there moving up to the well it's sitting at just under the 50 bar moving average at the moment it's got the five in the way and then the 38 uh, just another thought that's occurred to me, we put the clocks back this uh, weekend as well, so we're going to be out with the US by an hour next week. I haven't heard of whether they're switching from daylight savings or not. I'm not aware of that yet, but I've not looked either. So if, the, if it's a case that uh, the US have another week, then we will be uh, obviously uh, uh, changing hours and it'll be off uh, slightly by an hour. In uh, the... 30 minute uh, dollar you can see they're trying to get back to yesterday's high at the moment in the silver markets uh, sideways for the last few days uh, 30 minute chart you can see it's choppy there we're just down a bit on the overnight you'll have to watch uh, yesterday's low if the dollar starts moving higher then they will create the price of silver and uh, gold which is sideways there but if you look in the 30 minute we're already attempting to uh, do this so uh, we could see the markets moving lower today based on what we're already seeing in the dollar and the uh, gold markets as well but after so many up days for the last um, what from the 13th of uh, October certainly for the last two weeks of trading the market's done nothing but break the previous day's high that has to have uh, a breather and uh, the market will want to uh, pull back before moving higher once more Okay, that uh, will do it for this one. Let's see what the markets actually do today and uh, have a great weekend. All things being equal, I will see you on Monday. And as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.